<sighs> I just want to drive. What do you think, Char? Should we do a review today? Mm. Review? Yep, car review? What do you think? She just wants to go back to sleep, I guess. What is up, guys? My name is Mark Sanrio. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC Vlog, guys. Today, we're going to do a car review on one of the cars that I bought down at Alamo City Hobbies in San Antonio. I almost messed it up. I almost call it Alamo Hobbies. Alamo City Hobbies. I'll put a link in the eye above when I went and visited that hobby shop. That hobby shop had so many cool cars. It was freaking awesome. So I picked up a few, a few that I can't really get in this area. And one of them that we're unboxing today and driving today is huge. It's extra large. Boom! Here it is, guys. Oh my God, you can't even see me. This is the HBI Savage XL Flux. Yes, a lot of you guys that were asking me were hoping that I bought this thing down at Alamo City Hobbies, and I did. So today we're gonna unbox it, drive it. You can't even see me. It's so big, it takes up the entire screen. There you go. Drive it, and I'll tell you what I think, guys. Boom! All right, so here it is, the Savage XL Flux. So. This truck is kind of strange. I say it's strange, it's a weird size. So it's priced, yeah, it's priced pretty high. They're actually $800, $789.99 is what it was listed for. But at that price, it's kind of in the same category. It's really, really close to like an X-Max. It is not as big, and big as an X-Max. It's about the size of a sledge and we'll compare them all, maybe like an E-Revo. It's definitely not fist scale style. So it's kind of in a strange, size category so although it's bigger than like your typical 10 scale monster trucks it only has a 6s so again the x max is an 8s which by the way this is not a paid product placement needless to say uh, but yes it's a 6s not an 8s so we are going to run it on 6s today the chassis is that signature savage chassis the big plates on the side i've never actually owned one i'm really really excited to drive one it looks like a lot of the weight is in the center which is which is really really good the shocks feel like they're they're actually super stiff it doesn't feel like it's going to case really really bad there's the motor i do feel like that motor is it's kind of small for <laughs> how big the truck is there's your ESC. It does look like a hobby wing um maybe hobby wing based who knows check out that diff that looks like i don't know maybe not even a diff that's like a spool in the middle yeah it's pretty raw chassis battery boxes on the side your motor esc by the way there's a lot of dust on this thing because this one was the display model it's been <laughs> apparently it's been sitting a while in the shop so i was like well i want it but check out the body that i got i got the cool kind of forest green color with the orange accents i think that looks super sick but oh man let's check out what it looks like under the car because again, I've never owned an HPI Savage before. That's kind of interesting. There's no plate under there. Like the transmission's just kind of exposed. And those battery boxes are, are literally just kind of strapped to the side, <laughs> mounted to the side. So really all you need is that middle centerpiece. It's funny how they put so much of the mass in middle of the wheelbase. That's gotta be a good thing. Some other things I noticed just kind of inspecting the car. This is kind of strange. These pins, see how look, this pin looks like it's going in further than this one. Apparently these bumpers are the only things that keep that pin from coming out. I mean, I guess that's an okay design. Those pins shouldn't come out, but I do think that looks kind of strange. Uh, there it is on the back. The arms look a little small, a little dainty. I guess they're kind of, they're kind of thick, but for how big this car is, those arms look like something you would see on like a 10 scale short course or something like that. That's kind of interesting. Also, it doesn't have adjustable camber links, which kind of stinks for 800 bucks. Oh, these are, this isn't a camber link. This is like a, an upper arm. So yeah, you can't change it anyways, but yep, over here. So I would say it's a camber link because it looks like just a link, but then you see a little split there, which makes it, looks like, makes it look like an actual upper arm, which is probably what it was supposed to be. But the arms look a little dainty. Not sure how much we can trust those. We'll, We'll put them through the ringer, needless to say. In regards to what it comes with, it comes with your standard issue high-end HPI remote. This is the same remote that comes on the W, I think it's the WRX, is WRX? 
WR8 Subaru, which by the way is an awesome car. I will put a link in the eye above to that video where I drove that thing. Comes with what looks like some battery spacers, like little battery foams. Uh, this is another foam, it's kind of weird. I'm not sure where that one goes. Comes with batteries, nice, comes with batteries, and then just your, your tools and some extra parts. I'm sure I'll need those for something. That looks like a body mount or something, and then it comes with a, a wheel wrench, which looks like a 17 millimeter hexes. And then your remote, your, your, I was about to say remote, your manual, comes with a manual. And it looks like it does come with stickers also, which is nice. As I stated before, I've never actually owned a HPI Savage. I guess there's a regular HPI Savage because apparently the XL is 60 millimeters longer and also 30 millimeters wider. It says it's gonna do 60, we will test that out. We will put the GNSS analyzer in it to see what our top speed is. There's your motor, 2200 KV with a 6S ESC. Bulletproof gears. You know what gears weren't bulletproof? The ones on that Sport 3 that I did a review at PNB with. E-Tron Flux car. Yeah, those diffs exploded quick. All right, so here she is. Oh, she looks so good. Okay, let's get some cars to compare it to. Here it is next to, oh, whoa, whoa. The Creighton, come on, straighten these tires out. Oh, there we go. So it definitely looks like the exact same size as the Creighton, so that would mean it should look the same size as the Sledge. There it is next to the Sledge. And here it is next to one of my favorite little bashers, the Max. So as you can see, it's not significantly bigger than the other cars. Actually, let's get the uh, let's get the old X Max so we can see how big it is next to the X Max. <laughs> yeah, it's it's way way smaller than the X Max. There it is next to the X Max. So this is 800 bucks. This was 899 at a time. Now they're a thousand bucks. That is about 600, 650. That's 750, 600. So, yeah, you can see why this thing sat on the shelf so long. Like, if you had these options compared to this one, yeah, it's kind of a no brainer. One thing I will point out though, whenever I put this car down, I noticed that it had major clearance on the front. So, basically, it's not even hitting bumper when it's that far up. So, that means whenever it lands like this, it shouldn't dig into the ground and flip over. Now, with that said, my pre-run check, I basically check the wheel nuts, I recalibrate the EC, those kind of things, just make sure everything's ready to go. I noticed that this actually doesn't have 17 millimeter hexes. Those look like eight millimeter nuts. That's maybe even seven millimeter. That's tiny for a big truck like that. So hopefully those will hold up, we'll find out, but all right. All right, let's go drive these things. Uh, all right. First run is done. I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is, actually we'll go with the bad news. Bad news is it didn't last very long. It uh, was really, really not long. But the good news is, is because it wasn't that long, we can do a full reaction video on the entire first drive. So let's get to it. All right. Whoa. Um, so initially I was, I was blown away. I was like, whoa, it's super fast. I had to adjust my trim a little bit because whoa. the trim was a little bit off. But as you can tell, I was really blown away with how much power it has. Ethan is driving the sledge. He's driving the sledge on 4S though. I, I thought the sledge wasn't bad on 4S. So I was like, let's go back to it on 4S. I'll tell you more about that here in a little bit, but watch this. Whoa. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> did you see that? Did, did you see that? Hold on, let's let's get a replay of that. All right, here it is. Yay. It did a standing backflip. Yes, a standing backflip. Not gonna lie, I was super impressed when it did it, but deep inside, I knew that this car was not gonna last long. Oh my god! Oh my god! Did it again? Like just what was that? just in general cars that have that much power. They break, they don't last long. I honestly thought it was broken here. Um, it wasn't. It's got a crap ton of power, apparently. Hurry up, run, Mark. It's taking so long. All right, so yes, I'm super impressed at this point. I'm like, okay, I gotta jump this uh, this big hill. The, little ju the hill that I jump all the time whenever I kind of test cars out. So, oh, look oh at God, it. I it's just like a, it's like a wheelie. I even said <laughs> it's like a wheelie king. So getting to the top of the hill so I can make the jump. Super excited about it. I know this thing's got a lot of power. I have yet to go full throttle on this thing, by the way. 
I kind of went full throttle and did a backflip, but seriously, that was probably like 80%. It just has so much... It, the, the throttle curve wasn't linear. It was I mean, almost exponential, so okay. it's like when oh, I got to a go. certain point, it really took right? off. But here we go. We're going to hit this hill. I mean, it's scented, right? I mean, that land, that's pretty far. It landed, did not break. So at this point, I'm, I'm feeling good. Like, this car is Go fast. It. it jumps really well. It didn't really case down really hard when it jumped. Like, the, the suspension... There goes Ethan's attempt at uh, trying to clear the jump. Right. He just wasn't going fast enough. Which, that's kind of a spoiler on bashing with the sledge on 4S. All right, so I'm getting ready to do another one. Super excited. This thing's super fast. Your help, Oh, actually, you know what I was going to do here? I was going to do a slow-mo video of it doing a standing backflip. Oh, and that happens. A tire flew off. Yeah. The tire flew off. I kind of expected that to happen. And the reason why I thought it was going to happen is because I actually did some research on this car before I started driving it. And it looks like that's a common problem with the wheels flying off. Hence why I made sure they were tightened before I started, which I always make sure wheels are tightened before I start bashing the cars, or especially a new car that I just pulled out of the box. But yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Unfortunately, because it happened in the grass, finding that, that wheel nut, it, it wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to happen at all. And the other unfortunate part is when I looked on the back side where the hex is, on the back side of the wheel, it looks like it was completely stripped out. So that happens because since the wheel is spinning on the hex, it's actually spinning the wheel nut off also. So it actually starts with the, the center of the hex, the inside of the wheel hex stripping out before it actually backs that wheel nut off and the wheel flies off. So that sucks. The wheel was stripped out. Now with that said, I was like, okay, I got back to the car. I was like, okay, I'm going to go find some 17 millimeter hexes because that's really what this truck needs. Unfortunately, it needs new tires too, or wheels and tires, since the wheels and tires are completely stripped out. And I decided to take one side off because there, there doesn't look like there was. It didn't look like there was a specific Savage XL Flux 17 millimeter conversion kit. And the weird thing is, is on the inside of the axle, basically there's just this long spacer that gives it that extra 30 millimeter width, which is kind of strange. So I wanted to see what it looked like on another, on the other side to see what I was expecting whenever I did the conversion. And the other side wheel hex was also almost stripped. Basically the hex was sitting in the middle, like it was about to back all the way off. So both rear wheels are stripped. Not to say I didn't expect that to happen because like I said, anything that has that much power is probably gonna strip something out like that. I'm surprised. Usually either dog bones fly out, dog bones break, uh, hexes strip, stuff like that, and it did. So with all that said, the truck is a freaking beast, like a straight up beast, like so much power. Unfortunately, I didn't get to enjoy it very much. It was $800 for two minutes of fun. Kind of sucks. <clears throat> I'm kind of torn on whether I want to fix this thing right now. Uh, obviously, I can't get the parts soon. That's just not a part that people carry at my local hobby shop, which is the reason why it's kind of hard to run HPI cars. Uh, but do I want to fix it now or do I want to just put it back in storage and move on with my life. I'm not sure. But overall, the car's super fast, too fast for its own good. And the major weak point are those wheels and hexes. And unfortunately, it's undrivable now. Well, I hope you liked this video. I didn't really. But if you did, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell. And you guys will see you next time. Later guys.